Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ibrahim Mohammed. I go by Ibsen Online. And today, as you can see from the title of this video, we're gonna be talking everything on GDL, Graduate Diploma into Law, or the Law Conversion course. Now, I have just ended my GDL course. I started in September and I finished my exams in August of 2020. Specifically, I did the GDL at BPP University. And specifically, I did this at the Cambridge campus. Two important disclaimers, make sure when you pick the GDL and when you pick a provider, you thoroughly do your research because each provider is different. Had I known what BPP University Cambridge was gonna be like, I probably would have not gone. However, it happened and we made it work. Also, your experience on the GDL is going to differ completely if you already have a training contract and you are being sponsored by your law firm compared to if you do not and this year you are seeking a training contract. I am the latter and that completely changed the experience of the GDL compared to the majority of my friends who already had a training contract provider. So for the purposes of this video to make things easier, I will first talk more generally about the GDL and the subjects you learn and how it's structured. I will then talk about my advice when it comes to students who are seeking a training contract on this course. Now there are six exam based subjects and those were equity, tort, criminal, contract, constitution and admin and land law. Then there were three multiple choice based topics and that for us was European Union law, a case analysis and a statute analysis and finally there is one research essay and you are actually given a range of topics and you get to pick which one you want to do and I picked family law specifically I got to focus on fertility law now what I will say is in terms of the content and the subject matter what you're learning within the GDL and what law is in this course I really really liked I had so much fun learning a whole new different subject and compared to an LLB which is three years which is very academic the GDL is more vocational it's a bit more professional it's based more on scenarios as opposed to academic textbooks and so I very much very much like the GDL in terms of the content I was learning and I had a lot of fun especially with the fertility law paper like every single minute it was okay I'm going to be a criminal lawyer okay I'm going to be a contract lawyer okay I'm going to be this lawyer this lawyer. Now, in terms of how you are going to find these papers the reality is you have already some experience with the exam style. For example, I'm sure that some of you have done exams before. I'm sure that some of you may have done multiple choice exams before. And I'm sure that some of you have done a dissertation, which is basically the research essay. So you are definitely covering law in many different exam forms. And I liked that. I liked that there was a big range. I will say personally, this is just a personal thing, I am not strong on multiple choice. It's always been a big weakness of mine. So I definitely would recommend that if you are unfamiliar with either doing exams or doing research or doing multiple choice, prepare, prepare, because it's gonna be difficult. So prepare. And also just to remind you that you are learning a lot of content. Don't think just because you are not doing the complete LLB that you're gonna actually just learn the most important parts. The most important parts that you are learning of law that you practice are very, very, very in depth. And you need to make sure that you allow yourself a good amount of time to cover everything. It's a lot of content. And I don't necessarily think that it's hard to digest. I think it's, it's quite easy to understand what's happening. You're not being asked to analyze something or, or make up a definition. It's very simple. You just read the law and then you understand it and then you apply it. But there was just so much. There was so much. Now in terms of the teaching at the PPP, it usually is you are given one lecture per subject per week, you are then given one tutorial per subject per week, and you are then given one consolidation lesson per subject per week. To prepare for the lecture, you will do some wider reading because they will give you some study notes. And in terms of the tutorials, you will be given a scenario that you would analyze for the tutorial. And that scenario given is pretty much identical to what you would be given in the exam. So 
Lectures are fine, normal lectures. Tutorials, I would say they're more like seminars. I, they're not really like tutorials like Oxford tutorials or Cambridge supervisions. They're not like that at all. They are instead just like seminars where you are in a group of maybe 15 and you go through the answers of a worksheet or the scenario with a tutor with a teacher. Now this wasn't really made clear when applying, but if you are based in London, you would be able to have face-to-face -face, or at least now live online lectures, tutorials and consolidation sessions. For the Cambridge campus, the lectures were pre-recorded, the consolidation lessons are also pre-recorded. All we had was tutorials. So I would be going in to class seven hours a week and that was just to do my tutorials. And that was fine because it meant that I had a lot of free time, but that free time was for you to do the work and you need, <laughs> it, it can pile up. So just make sure that you are doing the lectures, you are doing tutorials and you're doing the consolidation lessons because it really does add up. But the problem is some of the tutors, while they were, I'm sure, amazing lawyers, when it comes to teaching, I hope someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe they did a PGCE. I don't believe there was any sort of standardized teaching course that they had to do. I think it was just, okay, you have experience, now you can you can do some training sessions and then now you can teach. And I think that there are certain teaching styles that were just a bit unreliable, if I'm honest with you. I came from a very academic university, granted, so obviously I do hold things to a higher standard, but I just felt that online, there were certain lectures I really liked, for example, in criminal law, but then face-to-face -face for my tutorials, because it's a different tutor, it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't that great. And then when it came to equity, for example, I really liked the face-to-face -face tutor in equity, but then online, because it's a different staff member or a different lecturer, I didn't really like it. There's a lot of unreliableness when it comes to the teaching of BPP. So you need to make sure that you are very, very, very independent when you are studying on this course. You can't rely on saying to yourself, I have a great teacher who's gonna help me throughout the whole entire year you very much are kind of just independent. Before I move on and give you the other tip, I'm now going to take an ad break. You guys know how much and how expensive law school is, so please let's give the ads, please just allow it, just allow it so I can get that money back. Thank you so much. Now, other things that you might find difficult is just legal principles. You will see words that you have heard before, but in a legal context, they mean something very different. For example, trespass means something very different when you think of, oh, someone is trespassing onto your property as opposed to what trespass in tort or trespass in criminal law means. And there will be so many words that you just won't understand and you have to make sure you have a legal dictionary. I highly recommend that. The second thing I would advise is to make sure you are familiar with how law is created and what the sources of law are. So you usually learn this in the beginning of your GDL. I would say you have to pay the most attention in the beginning of the course because this is where you learn about, for example, the history, you learn about what case law is, you learn about what statue is, and you don't really come back to this, you're kind of just expected to know. So make sure you settle down wherever you're going, make sure you don't get no imposter syndrome, you're just ready to learn because the first few weeks is, in my opinion, very, very, very important. And the course goes so far, so you only have time to catch up with last week because you're doing next week, you have to wait for the reading week or the holiday. So. The beginning is so important, do not miss it out. This is a vocational course. So what happens is you are given a scenario. You have to analyze the scenario and then you have to apply the law and you have to advise the client. That is how the majority of the GDL is based. You're not going to overanalyze and think, what is the law in this scenario of criminal law? You're not gonna think, what is mens rea? What is actus rea? When it comes to applying legal principles, you have to be objective. You have to be able to understand a statute word for word. This is what it is, okay? But then when it comes to applying the law to the scenario, then you can become a bit creative. So let me give you an example. Let's just say you are talking about criminal law and you are doing a topic on criminal damage, okay? And the scenario you are given, and this is the scenario that we were given, I'll give you a real life example. There is a woman who visits her friend's house and she is being attacked by a cat. She's being scratched on. She picks up the cat and she throws it and the cat eventually goes out of the window. The statute will make it very clear, objectively, what is the mens rea and what is the actus rea. If they do this and they have this, this means that they may be liable for charges. It's very, it's there, okay? Objectively speaking, it's there. But where you can get creative is when you are looking at the scenario, you can actually think, okay, if I'm advising a client, 
what are some other things that I need to acknowledge when I'm actually going to tell them, oh, I think you are liable or I think you actually have a chance, you might have a defence. So this is where you get creative. For example, when I did my Kirill and Mok, I remember saying things like, okay, so you've been attacked by a cat and you <laughs> threw it out the window. Well, first of all, did you actually know that there was a window? Was there a curtain in front of it? Did you think that the cat was gonna land on the curtain? Did you think that the cat was gonna land on the bed? So questioning the intention of whether you actually wanted to throw the cat outside. Also, were you intoxicated? Was the cat very feral? Were you allergic to cats? Is that why you reacted on a flight and flight response? So when you're advising a client in the exam, you also have to bring up these questions that could be subjectively answered before you objectively apply it to the law. However, there is a limit to that. I know someone in my class, they argued that their client, the defendant, the reason why they picked up the cat and threw it outside when it was being scratched and they threw it outside the window was because the client believed that the cat had nine lives. And by throwing it outside the window, it was only gonna get rid of one life. Um, so there's a limit. And I think that you should just be aware of, you need to be creative, but you need to have common sense and then you need to also apply it objectively. Um, so just bear that in mind. And that comes with practice. When I first was doing tutorials, I did not think near as creatively as I did when I was doing my natural exam. So it comes with a lot of practice, but if you come from a humanities or a science background, I think that you will benefit and you will be able to add some flair to your answers, but you are still gonna have to learn not only new content, but also a new exam structure. And you know, just, just saying that, even for example, introductions and conclusions, there are some papers that don't want an introduction, there are some papers that don't want a conclusions, and the way in which you even structure essays is very different. For example, if you're doing tort law compared to if you were doing land law, there are certain different things you have to do for each paper during each exam, so, Make sure you actually research that. Make sure you look at mark schemes. Make sure you look at legal principles. Make sure you actually look at exemplar answers. Ask a tutor for exemplar answers. Basically treat it like it's an A-level. It's gonna be very difficult if you don't do the mocks. So make sure you are doing every single tutorial and every single mocks. It's gonna help you so much in the long run. And I even remember when I was first doing some of my mocks, I was confused over how to write pronouns. Do I say he? Do I say she? Do I write in first person? Do I write in third person? Can I use rhetorical questions? In psychology, when you're given a question, you already have the answer made up in your head and you're just writing down, I think the answer to this is X and this is Y. And new studies have raised this issue, but it further proves that the answer is Y. As opposed to law, you're saying the answer could be X, but if you bear this in mind, it could be Y. But then if we bear this in mind, then it could be Z. So there's a lot of kind of confusing structure towards law, but once you get it down, you get it down. So just keep practicing. I cannot tell you enough, exam structure is the most key thing in GDL. But that is all the kind of general advice I would give you. Of course, bear in mind that you have to remember the names of, of the cases and how important they are and trying to apply legal principles. But you'll be given study notes, but then you'll also be given textbooks. And I feel like there is quite a lot of information. I think what you're not given, at least what we were not given at BBP Cambridge is we wasn't really given enough mocks and we wasn't really given enough feedback when it came to mocks. And if we did get feedback, it would be like weeks. So we've forgotten about what we've done. And so it just wasn't great in terms of learning that way. But just exam structure is so, so, so key. And in terms of students on the course, I know for a fact that a lot of law students are competitive. I do believe that once I announced on my channel that I was gonna pursue a career in law, I feel like a lot of people have been a bit shady. However, I will say this, I did not experience this at all in my cohort on the GDL. Everyone there was lovely. Everyone was a range of ages. There were people who were ages ranged from 23, 24. I think I was one of the youngest people in the course actually in my cohort to people who were in their 50s and 60s. And I actually loved the fact that it was so diverse in age because I meant that you could just talk about different experiences and learn from different individuals. And people were doing the GDL for different reasons. I was doing it to become perhaps a commercial solicitor. Someone else was doing it to become a commercial solicitor. Somebody else was doing it because they already had a business. Somebody else wanted to do clinical negligence. Someone else wanted to become human rights lawyer so my course it was not competitive but I have heard that some people are I've not experienced that so I can't really comment all I would say is everyone's applications is different everyone does the exams by themselves so just don't worry about the competitiveness it comes with the culture of law and I think that you need to understand it and embrace it and not be scared of it because that's essentially what we're gonna go into for the rest of our lives and now I want to move on to students who have not got a training contract. But before I talk about this, we are now going to have an ad break here. So please do not skip the ads because that is how I pay 
my bills. <laughs> And I want to move on to students who have not got a training contract because for you, the GDL is not only hard because you have to do everything that I kind of just went through and you have to learn all these different new techniques for a new subject, but you also are going to be applying for a training contract. You are probably going to be wanting to try to attend all the professional development courses. You might even want to do pro bono. You might want to be a course rep. And you also have to pay your fees. And for me, I didn't really have a parent or anyone to rely on. I had to make sure that I was able to pay the course fees up front, but I also had to make sure that I paid living costs. And so I had to tutor. So you might have a part-time job. So there's a lot that goes on for this year if you do not have a training contract provider. My personal opinion is if you are definitely set on becoming a solicitor, I probably would recommend that you wait until you get a training contract provider because if they're willing to pay for it, why not? But if you like me, are still a bit unsure, and you want to dibble dabble in law, then, then you know, the GDI was a great course to do that. I think it was very applicable to me being an influencer, being a tutor, even renting. It helped me when I was leasing and, and dealing with documents. Law school definitely refined a lot of my skills. I only had to write a CV, learning how to argue, because you also have the opportunity to learn how to move. So law school in the GDI year was a very intense year, but I felt like I learned a lot of skills. But having said that, I was very, very tired. I was very tired and it was a very isolating year. And when the pandemic happened, I will say that I actually felt like I benefited a lot because they delayed exams, because with everything that was going on and everywhere that I had to be, when you have to attend this assessment center and attend this open day, like it's actually quite hard. Now I've already touched on it, but one of the first things I would recommend is you think very carefully about where you want to get your GDL from. For example, BPP is very different from the University of Law. These are private universities compared to if you wanted to do it at a university like City University London. The reason why I emphasize that is because I made the very amateur and naive decision to go to BPP because that is where a lot of my friends were going for their training contracts. And for some reason, I thought to myself that if a law firm sees that I've been educated at a university that they already send their graduates to to be trained for the GDL. That might that might help me out, help my application out a bit. No, it really does not. Do not make a rookie mistake. Make sure you do your research about where you are doing the GDL. It's just as important as if you were doing an undergrad at a university because this really is a lot of money that you're investing and in. what a horrible feeling if you pay all this amount of money and you do not have a great time there and then that negatively impacts your result. That is my biggest fear. And I want to emphasize that because BPP has had its fair share of controversy in the legal news and I'll be honest with you, I mean, I'm gonna speak about it so people are probably gonna be able to apply there. Just to let you know, I actually have not heard any students say one positive thing about BPP University which is a shame. I do think that there is a number of students around each campus that have their criticisms of the university. So I'm gonna be talking about BBP University, doing the GDL, but I am telling you now to please be very critical with everything that I'm saying and make sure you just do your research. And that research also needs to be specific to the campuses. For example, the Cambridge campus doing the GDL at BPP is very different to doing it at London. The building is, itself so different and you have to bear in mind that a lot of law firms will be based in London you also have to bear in mind that you'll be paying different fees and that actually does have an impact for example we paid I think nine and a half grand at Cambridge compared to those who paid eleven and a half grand at London but what we were not told was that we would not have face-to-face -face lectures and we would not have face-to-face -face consolidation lessons make sure you do your research not only on the course provider but on the campus there's a lot of research involved in this especially if you're paying yourself as someone who was able to start the GDL in September and I was able to get an international legal internship in December and then as also someone who was able to get a vacation scheme for Easter and then have training contract interviews in summer I feel like I kind of did the exemplar year of how non-training contract holders would want their year to go what I would advise you to do is to study very intensively in the beginning. Make sure you go to all the law fairs or you go to the virtual open days online in September, October, November. Of course, apply for your winter vacation scheme. Try to do some in December. And the Christmas holidays, make sure you go over everything that you missed because you were applying for vacation schemes. Generally, you have a bunch of vacation scheme deadlines, so make sure you try and get all of that done because also you'll be studying. And then February, March, 
you have assessment centers and you keep studying. And then in April, you're then given four to six weeks of study leave. Make sure you use that period to lock yourself in your room and just study. In fact, every reading week you get, it's not a holiday. It's not a holiday, it's a chance for you to catch up on your work. So make sure you do that. It could be that you decide that maybe you don't wanna pursue a training contract this year and instead you wanna do it next year. And that is a very, very, very fair thing to do. This process of getting a training contract is very long. For me personally, I've only been doing it for a year. I'm a baby into law school. Literally just last year, August 2019 to August 2020, that was when I first looked at a law book. And this seems like a very, very, very long process with so many people applying for one role and so many rejections. So I would just say to each to their own, if you wanna just use this year to study, then do that. If you want to use this year to study and get a training contract, then I honestly wish you the best of luck because it is hard. If you've got a training contract, you're fine. Just focus on the content and, and you'll be fine. Just practice essays and you'll be fine but guys that's it from me in this video thank you all so much for watching if you want to stay tuned with my legal career then make sure you follow me on linkedin i could maybe answer a few personal questions on linkedin if i have the time if you want to follow for the bands then make sure you follow us on instagram i upload videos every tuesday and every friday at 6 p.m please make sure you subscribe and good luck it's a very very long process the gdl but i will say I really like law. I really like what I've been learning and I, fingers crossed, cannot wait to practice it. Good luck. Let me know how it goes and God bless.